Aunt May's recipe for wheat cakes. <laughs> I could never make it work on my own. The infamous dumpling recipe. Should have come with step 10, try not to burn everything in MJ's apartment. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are returning to the land of food from video games. As the new Spider-Man game contains the Babish Holy Grail, some actual written recipes. And even more exciting, the dumpling recipe calls for store-bought wrappers. Hallelujah, all praise be to Marvel. But why don't we start with Aunt May's wheat cakes. We're combining one cup each buckwheat and whole wheat flour, sifting the latter for some reason, adding two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and in a separate bowl, combining two cups of buttermilk with two teaspoons of molasses. Forgive yourself for being under the weather and not banging on all cylinders and forgetting to add a teaspoon of salt to the dry mixture and an entire cup of buttermilk to the wet mixture. Luckily we caught our mistakes just in time and we can move on to whipping our egg whites. Stiff but not dry as the recipe specifies. I'm not entirely sure what that means. That looks pretty stiff but not dry to me. Setting that aside to the dry mixture we're adding two beaten egg yolks with Tiny Whisk's best friend Tiny Spatula, our correctly proportioned buttermilk mixture, and a quarter cup of melted butter. Just just like any old pancake, we are endeavoring not to overmix. I don't care if it's lumpy, don't overmix. Once the mixture just barely comes together, we are gently folding in the egg whites, creating a surprisingly fluffy batter. The recipe then calls for frying on a greased skillet. I'm gonna take that as bacon grease. And once we got that shimmering, it's time to add a generous dollop of our wheat cake mixture, letting cook over medium low heat until bubbles form on the surface and the bottom is browned and crisp. Finish cooking on the second side, stack them high, top them with a generous pat of butter and a very generous drizzling of maple syrup. The only thing sweet in these pancakes is two teaspoons of molasses, so I have a feeling they're gonna need some help, and they do. These are perfectly competent buckwheat pancakes, no complaints. Not entirely sure why they're Peter's favorite either, but they are decidedly not going to enter the Clean Blake Club. Why don't we take a crack at a recipe that I think has a decent shot of ending up in those hallowed halls. We're starting by making a dipping sauce out of one half of one cup of soy sauce, one tablespoon of seasoned rice wine vinegar, and then two tablespoons of Chinese chives, also known as garlic garlic chives. They're a little hard to find, so if you can't, just supplement with regular chives and a little bit of fresh garlic. Lastly, one tablespoon of sesame seeds and one heaping teaspoon of garlic chili cock sauce. Whisk together briskly, using a tiny whisk, and set aside so we can do the thing that I've been dreading all week, stuffing dumplings. This recipe is a very basic pork filling of one pound of ground pork, to which we are going to add three large cloves of finely minced garlic, one beaten egg. This is going to give a little bit of structure and body to our filling. Another two tablespoons of the aforementioned Chinese chives. Chives, finely minced, and in addition to two tablespoons of soy sauce, I forgot to film the addition of one and one half tablespoons of the all-important sesame oil. Last up is one tablespoon or about a one inch knob of finely minced fresh ginger. We're adding all these things to the bowl and mixing thoroughly until we get a nice fully incorporated pork meat filling. Now the recipe at this point simply states to fill, seal, and crimp the dumplings, something that I'm really bad at. So fingers crossed as we lightly dust our work surface with flour and using our finger we're going to gently wet the outside edge of our dumpling wrapper. Then once the whole outside edge has been wetted, we're placing, I'd say, about a rounded teaspoonful of the filling into the center of the wrapper. Then we're folding the wrapper in half, pinching where the edges meet, wetting the outside of the wrapper, and making three pleats on each side of the dumpling to seal it shut. I'm sorry, I know I'm not doing a very good job of showing what I'm doing here. I've included a link in the video description that shows how to do this properly. Once we got this guy all sealed up and the top edge all curled in half, like a half moon, kind of, I don't know. We're rinsing and repeating with the remaining filling and dumpling wrappers. This is definitely an acquired skill and this is definitely my first time doing it, so I will revisit dumpling wrapping technique in future episodes. You know, once I've gotten like halfway decent at it. Anyway, we're heating up some vegetable oil in the bottom of a nonstick fry pan until quite hot, adding the dumplings and making sure that each one is coated with a little bit of oil on the bottom side and cooking until lovely and brown. And then we're going to add into the hot pan about half a cup of water, lowering the heat to medium low, covering and letting steam and cook fully for about five minutes. Okay, my dumpling game is definitely not 100%, but these are pretty, pretty good looking for a first attempt, you know? Sorry I'm getting a little rambly, I'm sick, and I am on medication. Anyway, at long last, it is dipping time. And I can tell you right now, this is a real solid dumpling recipe. If you've ever wanted to make classic Chinese pork dumplings, this is a great place to start. It tastes like every Chinese pork dumpling I've ever had, which is to say, awesome. Don't worry, I know I'm double dipping, but I'm the only one here. I'm Sawyer's working from home today. And while I just don't have the appetite right now to put these in the clean plate club, I'm gonna put them in the I ate six of them club, which is still a pretty high honor. Now what the hell, let's make it seven. Welcome Spider-Man dumplings to the I ate seven of them club. Mm -hmm. 